Hello, everybody. We're big. We're bad. We're back. I was about to say we're in black, but I think... I think this is dark blue. Maybe it is black. Maybe it's just faded. We're in faded black. Faded black. Do you remember there was a period in the... Uh, was it like the early 80s when Fade to Grey, they had Visage. Remember Visage? They had that great song, Fade to Grey. And I remember I was writing lyrics a couple of, well, probably in the mid-90s, and we were trying to get a rhyme scheme going. And we're like, why don't we say Fade to Grey? And the co-writer I was working with was like, that is probably the most used lyric ever. And, you know, Fade to Black, Fade to Grey. Anyway, I'm in grey. How are you all? <laughs> we have John Sammers, we have Andre, we have Russell, we have Erasmus, uh, we have Tom, we have Pete, we have Daryl, we have Herd Lefe, or Lefe, uh, Mike, hey Mike, Dr. Dubious, hey Dr. Dubious, hey um, Ashish, uh, Drum Pete, hey Drum Pete, Real Raven, that's Axel, hey Axel, um, Chris, uh, Dave, um, Dale, um, Paul Donovan, uh, Felix, Tom Kowalski, um, Idaho Turtle, Chris Ibbotson. Hey, Chris Ibbotson. Hey, Bob Huron. Hey, John Summers. Hey, Carsten. Hey, Carsten, how are you? Um, wow. Rich Smith, Theobald, um, Matthew, or Matthew. Um, loads of amazing people. Sam, Rich. Uh, it's just incredible. Kenny, Benz, John Bobbitt, Irfan, um, Felix, Bib. Uh, Patrick, what a lovely collection of guys and girls we have here. So we've got an exciting one here. We, we've been doing the, um, the Lily track from Little Empire. And I just said to, actually it was yesterday, I, we, it was a text between uh, Eric, myself and Michael Humphreys. And Michael is an absolutely amazing jazz guitar player, keyboard player. He's an MD for a bunch of artists. Um, he's just a wonderful guy, Michael Humphreys. Um, He's sort of like, he's not quite family friend yet, but he, he's going to be. He's one of my favorite people. My my wife was here the other day and, uh, and, and everybody loves this guy. First of all, he's stupidly talented, um, very, very humble and uh, really proactive. I think one of the things in our business that um, cannot be underestimated is the workaholic, workaholism, Re really, really pushing yourself and working super hard. And Michael is one of those guys. Wonderful musician, incredible, not just guitar player, but piano player as well. And he plays piano on this. Um, now, so what this is, and first of all, got to thank DistroKid. This is a course sponsored by our friends over at DistroKid. They are paying um, Eric's uh, um, salary here. So thank you. <laughs> Eric, you have to invoice them. Oh. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Anyway, so now all joking aside, DistroKid has uh, been very, very generous to sponsor these Monday um, mixing sessions. And what it's done is it's allowed us to focus every Monday morning and do mix a song for an hour or two. And I'm super, super excited we get to do this. Um, they've also given us 30% off, which is the biggest discount they do. So if you want to join DistroKid, you can down below. The reason why we recommend DistroKid, I know there's lots of services, but the reason why producers, engineers, and mixers, and songwriters love it is because you can register the song with them, you can upload it with them, and you can individually pay people directly from source. As a producer of not just major label records, obviously I've done uh, James Blunt and The Fray and Howie and uh, Mattis Yahoo and Aerosmith and all these other, Augustana, and loads of great bands. I've worked with all these amazing artists on major labels and I have contracts with them and I get paid. When you work with independent artists, you can have a contract, but then you have to go back and sort of be at the, their mercy that you're going to pay them. And it's not that they don't want to pay you. It's just sometimes it's an accounting mess. Maybe one month they made $120. Maybe the next month they made $200. Maybe the month after that they made $3.45. And then they have to figure out your percentage. If you use DistroKid, the reason why we love it as producers, engineers, songwriters, mixers, even musicians, if you are owed some money, they can individually assign the amount of the percentage that you are paid at source. So you just have your own DistroKid account, highly recommend it, get a DistroKid account, and then you get paid directly into that account. And it saves all of the accounting headaches, it saves all of that problem. And frankly, 
it's been a godsend for so many of us that work with independent artists. We say to them, how are you going to release the record? And you suggest to do it on DistroKid. Sometimes you, I just release it myself. And then you divide up how everybody's going to get paid. It is awesome. So I think for us in this community here, I highly recommend it. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. So um, get yourself a DistroKid account and you can get it for 30% off underneath here. Um, and uh, God bless America. All right. So long, farewell. No, we're not going yet. All right. What do we have? So Michael put together this kind of all-star band. And then in, I, th I don't know where it was done. Was it done in like a school hall or something? What was it? I don't remember. But anyway, it's a live band. And it's... It's vocals, percussion, piano, guitar, bass, and horns all in a room together. So you can imagine, there's tons and tons of bleed. This is a challenge to mix, tons and tons of bleed. Now we did do some RX stuff to try and remove some bleed. So the tracks that you can download, you get before and after. So download the multi-tracks down below and you can do it. You can use some of the tracks that have got no bleed in them, that or little bleed that we've done with RX, or you can use the unisotoped ones and do it yourself, or mix it with those, whatever you like. So there is a rough console mix here. So why don't I play you what it is? Please, if you haven't already, download the multi-tracks. This is a fantastic song. And it's a cover of Crazy by Niles Barkley. Eric just put up the uh, multi-tracks there. <laughs> I'm going to fast forward a bit, but you can see that lovely acoustic piano. Now, this isn't my piano. This is all done by Michael. So you get the idea, it's going a little further. So yesterday I was going through all of the uh, the videos, answering comments and stuff that I could do on a Sunday. Well, I do every day. Um, and a lot of people on our live ones from the last couple of weeks have been going, you need to do some more jazz funk. And I was like, stay tuned. So basically it's a jazzy, funky, live musician version of Crazy. So once again, download the multi-tracks. Some of the multi, the, you can have the multi-tracks of all that have been isotoped, RXed, and then there's ones without that. So you can use either, a combination thereof. It's really up to you. So let's have a listen. Now we did put in some kick samples and some snare samples for you. So you can choose to use those if you like, or you can use them to place your own samples on. So here are the drums with no samples. Listen to that horn bleed. So let's do a little quick mix of the live elements. So I think the first thing to do there is just let's crank up that kick. So immediately you can tell, even at plus 12 dB, it's not going to get loud enough. So I'm just going to grab, um, let's just grab something like a, 
of compressor just to use it for gain. Or why don't we do this? Let's go, because we're in uh, Pro Tools, we'll just clip gain it up. So I'm actually going to go here. Depending on what your DAW is, you should be able to do this. But we'll clip gain it up. So there we go. Now let's have a listen. And we'll turn it up as well. So I'm not going to reach for the sample yet. We're just going to see what we can do just using it. So you can tell there's a ton of bleed. So this is actually where using the samples was kind of a cheap but also useful because it allowed us to get that kick and snare out in front a bit more because otherwise, if you start applying a lot of compression on, on those live instruments, of course, all of the bleed is going to come through, which is fine. It's like getting that balance. I mean, personally, I love that bleed. Love that bleed. All right, now let's put the kick sample in quietly. Take it out. So it's nice, it's a little touch. It's about seven or eight dB down from, from the original source. Thanks, Sean. Sean's saying, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's always Eric's fault, <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's some great per percussion tracks. So I think the secret for me on this one being a live one is like, how much can we do without using compression and EQ? Because when you've got live sources like this with tons and tons of bleed, if you start getting really carried away with compression in particular, you're bringing up the bleed. If I start reducing the dynamic range. So here's an instance where a subtle amount of snare sample and kick sample is actually quite useful because it's bringing them forward, even though it's not very dynamic, the sample, I will have to say, but it's bringing it forward. But look at that snare track. Look how quiet it is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gain that snare track up again using clip gain. We'll turn it up a bit as well. Now let's put a little taste of the snare sample. Not much, because I can tell immediately it's not going to be good. Just a little bit. So I'm using the clip gain, which is basically... you. Back in the olden days, before I had clip gain, the, people used to use this thing called normalize. When normalize, it would basically it would take the peak thing and, make, and turn everything up so it wasn't clipping, but it would just bring the whole track up to a level that was easier to mix at. Now we clip gain it. So I'm adding a little bit of sample. Starting to get a little bit noticeable there, so I'll just bring it down a little bit. Now, if you want to try a different sample of your own, I'm not saying you have to use the sample, but it's useful to just bleed it, just blend it in a little bit. It's really helping out. Okay, so that's that's the drum sound. Now I know I need more low end on that kick, but we're gonna build this up using all Create a rough mix without any EQ or compression. So let's throw in the percussion. I'm going to solo it because I actually don't know what's on the percussion track. Now, what's difficult is like there's a lot of bleed going on in there.
Okay, so here's the toms. Sorry, here is the uh, congas and the bongos. Oh, you can definitely trigger your, your samples dynamically. You can do all kinds of different stuff. I'm just using them as like quietly in the background just to add a consistent hit. Do whatever you like. So the reality is, is like the, those kungas, those bongos uh, are going to be room mics for the drums as well. So listen to the overheads. Throw in that percussion. So I'm just going to bring up that again. I'm going to clip gain that up. Now, what we've done with the overheads there is just separate out the toms because the toms were obviously being recorded in the overheads. So they got separated out and gained up a little bit more aggressively. Again, we've done a little bit of the legwork for you, but you also have the files if you want to do it in a different way. We did it in that way to try and bring out the toms. You don't have to do that. You can do whatever you like. And I'm going to clip gain up those toms just a little bit more. So again, you can do this any way you like, but because I'm in Pro Tools, I'm using clip gain. In your DAW, you could, you could do all kinds of different things. All right, so let's throw all the drums together. Again, what we've done is we've done this without using any EQ or compression, just volume, basically. question Julian Julian's asking what criteria do you use for choosing samples one of two things number one making the snare sound the same as the existing snare so what I'll do quite often is if I have a sample and I can tune it in pitch I might go well the snare's going dong so I take the sample and maybe dong and I, I tune it up so dong and I get it to be the same that's number one criteria. Number two criteria is actually the opposite, something that the snare is missing. So it's either going to be a snare that's identical as near as down, darn it, but also even, to just to go underneath to make the snare even. Sometimes one of the snares hits. Like I might take a snare hit from the end of the song and then fly it across the, it, the snare all the way through so there's a consistent, the same snare playing the whole time. So that really is using the original sound. And sometimes the snare's only a top mic and you don't hear any bottom snare. You just hear doing, 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 doing. So I'll take a sample that's very bottom snare heavy and then blend it in underneath. So it's either a reinforce what the snare is doing or sometimes the opposite, adding something that the snare is lacking. Sometimes when you're doing a very dense mix, like a heavy, heavy metal song, the snare could just end up being pat, 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 pat and it doesn't sound exciting. So I'll put a ring, like a kong, kong, really ringy, tama brass, bell brass snare, you know, in there and blend it in. And even when the, then, so when the other instruments come in, you don't hear the ring quite so much, but the snare sounds exciting. So, so once again, it's either reinforce existing snare or add something that it's missing. All right, there's some percussion samples here. Let's see what they are. Oh, nice. Let's just bring those up a little bit. It's nice. Just bring them up a little bit so a bit more evident. 
Ha <laughs> ha! Hmm. Okay, where's the original percussion track? Here? Oh, the mic's cutting out. That's a shame. All right, so it looks like on the original recording, the mic cut out. Oh, we didn't do it, by the way, before. And he's like, what? But, you know, schnizzle happens. There's mistakes happen. Um, it's a live recording. All right, so um, unfortunately, that little bit's going to be quiet. All right, now let's, let's listen to the bass. It says strings next, but I'm going to bypass that. I'm going to make it bass next. I'm going to throw in the bass. I, uh, Tom, I didn't record this, so I don't know what mics they were using. I don't know. Yeah, it could be a bad cable, acid. I'm definitely going to do some work on that kick drum to make it cut a little bit more. Uh, let's listen to the strings. Looks like there's a lot of bleed on that. You can hear the RXing going on on that. It probably was a rehearsal space, exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. People always ask me about mixing tracks that are a challenge to mix. This is a challenge to mix. So this is definitely in some kind of rehearsal space. And... Uh... Hey! So that's Michael there. So Future Self Music. That's Michael, where he says, Hi, guys. Thanks for showing my track, Warren. Excited for you to hear this and see the full video. He did a full video behind it and everything. So go follow Michael on Future Self Music. We have another video with him coming out on Wednesday. You already know him from a couple of other videos we've done. Um, the one we did with uh, um, Jesus Molina uh, is him, too. That was one of his songs. So I, my feeling is, is I'm going to take the those strings and just pan them out the way for the time being. I'm hearing cymbals in there. I don't know what to do with it yet. So we'll make that decision in a little bit. Um, so here's what we've got so far. Sometimes in these situations where everything's bleeding in, you just have to do what you have to do. Right, let's have a listen to the guitar thrown in. <laughs> I love the bass sound too. I just think it needs to be just a little bit more even. So just a little bit of control of some of those um, transients and I think we'll be in a good place. Oh yeah, we are going with the bleed as much as possible. We're gonna, we're gonna see what we got. Absolutely transient music production. We're not only just mixing in a box. We're not even using as a laptop as powerful as, as Andrew would have. We're doing this on a 2009 cheese grater. Yep. This computer is 14 years old. <laughs> People always say to me, Pro Tools crashes all the time. I'm like, I use a 2014, uh, sorry, 2009, 14-year-old cheese grater, and we've never had it crash on a live stream in... in uh, Eight years of doing this, so I don't know. I don't know who those people have crashes. Well, we know why, because it's cracks. In all DAWs, you've got to avoid using crack plugins. 
Oh, Sheila's got a new computer. Hers is a 2010. <laughs> Andre says, same Mac here, never crashes. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Whenever I ask those guys that say it always crashes, they actually don't use the software. They're like, I heard. I heard from somebody. It's like, okay, all right. <laughs> So already it's starting to sound good. All I'm really hearing is like maybe a bit of verb on the snare, a little bit of compression, EQ on the snare, just a touch, a little bit on the kick, some evenness out on the bass. We're just going through and deciding. Let's have a listen to the keys. Clip gain this up, give it a fighting chance. Now I don't have the visuals here, so I don't know where everybody was sitting. So I'm just gonna have to guess. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the keyboard over to the right. Maybe uh, maybe Michael will remember where he was sitting. So I think Michael is playing keys and guitar on this. So. Uh Yeah, I don't know if I haven't. Uh, I remember back in the '90s, we used to get some crashes um, before there was other DAWs to compete with it. There's a profit. Let's uh, throw that in. I'm going to put that the other side. And turn it up. There's some peaks here. Have a... Piano. Let's bring that up a bit before we listen. That profit's very pitchy. I'm gonna probably bring that down. It's it has some tuning issues, so we'll we'll duck it. So I've got the electric keys pan to the right slightly. So I'm gonna pan that that piano to the to the left. Bass player is amazing. All right, let's have let's listen to some horns. I'm just going to take all everything out of solo now and listen and see what we got. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually put some, grab a little bit of compression on that vocal. So I'm a big Arvox at first kind of guy. I, 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 I'll probably put an OX sound on before using any compression. Um, so let's just, I was talking to Michael about this actually a couple of days ago when Michael was here. I think OX sound at the beginning is one of the best places to use it before you do any processing. So get your Soothe too if you... And yesterday I found out, um, somebody told me, one of our users messaged me and said that OX Sound now does installment plan on this plugin, which is a good idea because it's not it's not the cheapest plugin, but it's one of the most popular plugins on the market. So it makes sense that they would do a payment plan on it. All right, so... Again, I don't, I don't get an affiliate from it or anything. I'm just a big fan. It's just controlling the harshness, and then I can, I can brine it afterwards. So there's an overlap of vocals, so I'm going to copy that Soothe 2 up on there, and the Arvox. Same here. I 
I mix with both headphones and monitors. I'm doing this uh, on headphones at the moment because we're doing a live stream and it's easier. I, I mean, I've been recently, about six months ago, I moved, or five months ago, I moved over to the Odysseys, the, um, and these are the LCDXs. They're not cheap, but after years and years and years of mixing, I wanted to use headphones that I could rely on as being accurate, and I love these Odyssey headphones. I'm just doing some clip gaining here and bringing these up. I've drunk too many cups of tea. I'm going to have to use the bathroom quickly, which means we're going to have to get His Highness Sir Eric to tell you the funniest joke you've never heard in your life. Do you have one ready to go, Eric? I'm going to have to go with the, uh, a classic here. A classic joke. Be back in, back in two minutes. Eric is going to give you the joke of the day. Thank you ever so much, DistroKid. Please hit that like button. We're going to do a giveaway as well. In the meantime, while you're listening to Eric's funniest joke ever in the history of jokes, I'd like to know, hmm, um, have you ever recorded and mixed live instruments? Like a full band playing together. Have you ever recorded it? If you have, say yes, jazz band, funk band, whatever. If you've never recorded a live band playing together, let me know and you can say, no, I've never recorded it. No wrong answer. You can win a year's membership to the Produce Like a Pro Academy. Just by answering that simple question, Eric will pick at random. And uh, if you're already a member, you get an extended year. And if you're a lifetime member, which we have a lot of lifetime members here, you can pick any particular course you like from Pro Mix Academy. Be back in a second. Eric, you're up. Funniest joke ever in the history of jokes. Uh, what's up, everyone? Punk Rock Country All Live. Yes. Um, yeah, joke time. I don't know, Michael, I don't think you've ever seen uh, one of our live streams, but yeah, whenever Warren does his little restroom break, I don't know what to do, so I kind of have to keep the, you know, keep things going. Uh, I just tell a joke, because why not? But uh, yeah, joke time. Uh, I wasn't prepared, so, as usual, lately, but I'm gonna go with some uh, some classics here. So get your groans ready, please. What's the difference between a toilet seat and a monitor engineer? A toilet seat only has to deal with one asshole at a time. But doom <laughs> I actually got that one from Warren <laughs> a while back, and I was like, oh, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I think that was cool. That was cool because, you know, it's, it's, it's engineering related. <laughs> That was bad. No, it was good. Oh, I thought it was good. I was hoping for it. <laughs> I need more me. <laughs> Let's see. What's the average height of a sound engineer? I don't know. No one's ever seen one standing up. Badoom. What was the question? <laughs> I threw out the uh, the old, uh, what's the difference between a toilet seat and a monitor engineer? That's my one. I did. I give I you credit. Know. I give you credit. I swear. I give yeah, you credit. yeah. I didn't try to say Only that. has to deal with one asshole at a time. Whoa. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Monitor engineer told me that years ago. <laughs> I can't believe you made a note of that one. Yeah, that's an old road warrior thing. 
When we did the uh, wrapping cable thing the other day, everybody was like, Warren's obviously never been on the road. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I have done more live shows than you can shake a stick at. My, I actually started off the first few years of my life. Um, from the, I started playing professionally live when I was 16 years old. Um, that was my first gig. My first way of making money was I was a touring guitar player from the age of 16. Um, I mean, it's pretty much all I know. And it's always funny when people say, you dye your hair. I'm like, no kidding. I've dyed my hair pink. I've dyed my hair blue. I've bleached it blonde. Uh, it's now I've decided that I'm going to be a fake Elvis and dye it black, apparently. Apparently, Elvis is the one I get all the day. But yeah, of course I dye my hair. I'm in the music industry. <laughs> all right. Maybe I'll go back to pink. We should have a... What we should do is we should do a poll. What color should Warren dye his hair? Yeah, we'll do a poll. All right, I'm turning up all the horns. Here we go. Oh, there's plenty of there's plenty of photos of me with long hair. Where's where was all the photos from up there? Where are they all gone? Oh, there's a few over here. Because if you can find one with a bit of long hair, there's quite a few around. Book comes out tomorrow, Chris. Book comes out white, green, red, dark violet. Yeah. Dan said, used to be a hairdresser as well as gigging. Had all colours too, exactly. Paisley, go bald, <laughs> shave it. Not yet. We are doing special sales of, of signed copies. So for the signed copies, we have to buy them and then uh, sign them and ship them out. So we have to do a double shipping. So they'll be a little bit more expensive because we have to pay twice as many shipping things or whatever. But we will be signing copies as well. I love that profit. See, what I'm doing here is I'm doing volume stuff. So I'm listening and I want that. So I'm bringing it up. Musicians. So let's pan these around a little bit. Chaz has already ordered it. It doesn't officially go live till tomorrow, but you can find it. Shh. Here it is. Here it is. So basically, um, this one says not for resale because it's one of the advanced copies and the cover is slightly brighter and, and better looking than this. But yeah, here it is, 453 pages. Look at this index. Uh, I sent this to so many people I respect in the industry and, the, and it has been overwhelming the, how wonderful it is. Um, how, just like, look at the index. All right, so can you get that in focus? Yeah. Those are all the subjects that uh, uh, it's, and that too. It covers everything. It's three years. It took Jerry and I three years to write this. Three years. Not 
It's not a bunch of photocopies, as uh, somebody else was joking about with other books by YouTubers. It's not that. It is three years of research. Three years of me thinking about my whole career. And also, um, you can buy it. The, the, it's coming out officially tomorrow, but um, and you can get signed copies um, tomorrow. Go to, um, what's it called? It's homestudiorecording.com. We bought the URL. It was more expensive than probably anything else. Yeah. We'll send out an email tomorrow. Do you, Are you all on the email list? Get on the last, you know. Um, yeah. Three years in the making. So I'm going to keep listening and do this. We're going to go through and just do detail work. Now, I have, like, vocal effects that I've printed. Um, so let's just turn those down and bring them, bring them in a little bit. So this is actually a lexicon, so you can use these reverbs. It's not technically out till tomorrow. It's not out tomorrow. Thank you, thank you, uh, Tom. You'll get an email tomorrow. Um, and what's the video that's coming out? Is the one with me and Mark tomorrow? This is, might be you and Jerry. Me and Jerry. Oh, Jerry and I's video will be out tomorrow. So what we're doing here, just for those of you, we're just we're just volume volume balancing. We're not doing anything clever. I'm getting in there. I'm gaining different things up. Ah, uh, thank you, Trollstream. Thank you. I don't know, I've been doing music a long time and that, that section there as sure as heck isn't Latin, but it's got Latin elements in it. But we we can make it all about that. Oh, LOL. <laughs> Thank you, Sean, I appreciate it. There's a lot going on. There's a ton of stuff, and it's all live. So, you know, everything's bleeding into each other. Like I said, the tracks, there's a whole bunch of tracks there that have got, uh, have not been RX'd. Um, you know, so you can use those too. Yeah, mix it with the fully bled tracks as well, if you like. You can do a bit of everything. Uh, Eric gave you both those multi-tracks. So I think the first thing I want to do, now that we've balanced it a little bit more, maybe go to the end and see how chaotic it gets. Who, ch who won? Did you choose a winner? Was there a giveaway? There was a giveaway, yeah. I ask, oh, everybody, I'm so sorry. Before you sat down, yeah. Uh, what was the question I asked? 
Anybody remember? I see a lot of colors. Yeah. I, no, I, I said, uh, has anybody, any of you, um, what is your, um, have you ever recorded a band live? And if so, what genre was it? And if you haven't, just you can just say no. All right, one more time. Car, Eric. I'll get it. I'll get this. I'll get this. She. If we ever record a band live. Have you ever recorded a band live? If so, what genre? Let us know. Uh, yep. Yeah, and as Sean says, please don't forget to like and share and all of that kind of good stuff. So, have you ever recorded a band live? Okay, this is for a one-year membership of the Academy. If you're already a member, you get another year on top. If you're a lifetime member, which we have many, you can get a free course from Pro Mix Academy. So let us know now. And Eric, will pay attention now, won't you, Eric? I will. I still feel pretty similar about it. Let's get that kick, that snare with a bit of room on it. Let's get that kick and snare just a little tiny bit more in your face and aggressive. Let's get that bass just a little bit more even. And then let's take it from there. So first thing I do is let's just, let's just get a separate kick group. So now we're grouping the kicks together. Let's send that to one bus. I'll call it bus one. Why the heck not? So this is our first bus, auxiliary, group, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we'll call it, obviously, kick. And make it come in on one. And I'm not going to get too aggressive on the compression because I don't want to completely destroy the dynamics. We've got that kick sample quiet underneath, and it's mainly the live kick. But let's just see what it sounds like together. They work quite nice, nicely together. So, and it's, it's not actually that badly EQ'd, considering all the bleed. It's not badly recorded at all. Um, I've trust me, I've, I've dealt with a lot worse recordings than that. So, we'll just grab a generic EQ. So, any EQ you might have in your DAW will do. I'm actually going to a high pass, about twenty something like that, and then uh, we can always do a little bit of low mid cut. And this is global. This is on both the kicks coming in together. Now let's go in there and get some 60. I don't know if I want to put any attack on it yet. I think it's rather nice. Hey, Aid. I know everybody's freaking out because they can see a red light. So let's just put a little bit of compression on it. Um, just a shade. <sighs> it's a tough one because I only really want to I only really want to get that transient. Um, so actually, in this instance, don't laugh at me, but I'm actually going to use an L1 just to get the... Uh, just to shave that off. Only that... It turns, what I like about using it, if you use the link control, is it will keep the output volume exactly the same. Lunch fund. Thank you, Sean. So I'm really just shaving off the transient. Very nice. Still not a lot of low lows going on. Let's have a listen to these individual elements. So nothing in there. So the kick's quite high shelved, isn't it? Latin jazz, jazz fusion. <laughs> so you can call it whatever you like, yeah. <laughs> 
funky jazz fusion, funk, funk, jazz fusion, Latin, funky, funk, funk. With some extra funky, funky, jazz, fusion, funky, fusion, jazz. That's the feel. Um, boop, 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 So let's, I'm going to go to this kick drum and dial in more lows than we really need. Because it's being controlled going in there. Yeah, it's nice. So it's just giving that extra air on the bottom. I think it's three vocalists. Oh, yeah. Michael confirmed three vocalists. Woohoo! Eric gets a sandwich. Thank you, Sean. Sean's always so generous. He's always like asking everybody to like and share, and now he's bought us lunch. Oh, please hit that like button. We'll do what? First of all, uh, we've got just a few more minutes left. Um, first of all, I want to say a great thank you to DistroKid. DistroKid are sponsoring this. Now, if you're a musician, a producer, an engineer, a mixer, and you, an artist even, and you have to assign payments or be assigned payments because you have a deal with the artist, which is very typical because these days, budgets aren't like what they are. Well, sorry, what they used to be. And so nobody's coming in and dropping $10,000 anymore on this, that, and the other. So they might be just working at a fraction of the cost. So you want to participate in the back-end money. You always did, but now the deals tend to be bigger. I've heard 50-50 deals quite a lot where somebody's working for a fraction or free, and so they decide... It's to split the income 50-50 because they've spent three weeks recording for nothing or barely nothing. So whatever your deal might be, whether it be 3% or 50% or whatever your ownership of the song, if you upload it on DistroKid, you can there and then, as you upload, assign who is owed what. So you don't have to go back to the artist. You don't even have to go back to anybody. DistroKid will take the money and go divide it off equally between the people that have percentage ownership of the track. The songwriters, the musicians, if you agree to give them some, the, co um, the, you know, the producer, whatever, the mixer, whatever the deal is you have with these guys and girls. I love that. It makes life a lot easier than trying to chase an artist to get paid because you know it's all going to get paid at source. That's why we love DistroKid. Thank you ever so much. I really appreciate that. I can't pronounce your name. I'm very sorry, but so thank you for your video. You are ac very accurate track information. It's very good for the young and inexperienced to watch your video. The young and experienced are very good, very good to study. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I agree, Patrick. There's a lot of attack. I, I'm not. I'm not needing to get in there, but I just by cutting the low mids, I think the high mids are starting to jump out. So, let's just uh, let's have a listen to that snare. I want to put a bit more body on it, even though it probably doesn't need much more. We'll just call that snare. Make a group. It's uh, too long. Th these are one of these situations where a less is more. It doesn't mean I'm not going to do more mixing, but I think you know preparing this by just listening and and getting balances right and like we did gaining things is a lot more useful than just getting stuck in and comp compressing and EQing. You know, yes, compress and EQ, but why? What are you doing? Let's get this balanced and remember that this was performed live in a room with tons of bleed. Okay. So for me, I just want to hear some low end. Um, now, there is kick bleed into this, but it's it's you know it's so you're going to have to deal with that but let's just get into like a hundred ish tough one it's a very high tuned snare
I might just use the same trick and just use the L1 just to just to control the errant occasional. I don't usually use limiters, but in this instance, it sort of makes sense because it's just there to control the ultra dynamics. You see here, there's like a couple of transients that just get nuts. And I'm tempted, tempted off of that. And I don't always do that. You know, this is not a de rigueur thing that I do. But let's now create a stereo auxiliary for a snare verb. Snow, snow, snare verb. So, so snare verb. <laughs> Try saying that when you're drunk. Snare verb. Again, we're doing a less is more. We're listening all the time and making decisions based on listening, as opposed to just doing things for the sake of it. So we just decided, and we'll go, we'll use the, you know, the cheapest one that they got, which is the one that comes free with the, we'll go to room two, which is 750 milliseconds. Snurv, snurv. I like that. You could definitely, uh, Robert, yeah, you could definitely do uh, a plate as well. Yeah, plate, rooms, you know, something that feels natural like you would with these amazing musicians. Please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. We'll do one more giveaway um, before I'm going to do something on the bass here. So one more giveaway would be fantastic. I'm just going to tuck the snare down a little bit and the verb down a little bit. Maybe even the kick a little bit. Because what's starting to happen is that thing where you start focusing on instruments. I always remember um, Jim Scott said to me, the loudest thing in the mix is the last thing you mixed. <laughs> yeah, the, the live sound is great. It's very well recorded. I didn't record this. There are things that are tons and tons of bleed, but in general, drums are nicely recorded. I think the player is phenomenal. Now, in context, I feel like the, 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 the snare is getting a little bit too boxy now, so I'm actually bringing down the low-end boost and bringing up the top hop-end boost. That's the danger of listening in solo, and the reason why we love Bob, Bob Clearmountain, who doesn't listen in solo. Now I'm shaping the snare in the track. I love that bass sound. So cool. All right, so let's just do a few things. Let's do a little gentle. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the bass. Um, we'll do one more giveaway. What, what's the question you want to ask, Eric? Uh, what's everyone's favorite studio snack? <laughs> wow. Eric says, what is everyone's favorite studio snack? <laughs> I like that. That's a good question. What is everyone's favorite studio snack? So now what I'm going to do is I'm, I've duplicated the bass and I'm going to create a channel just for low end. So. I've actually duplicated it twice. So I've just reinforced the high passing and the low passing.
Now on the duplicate, I'm going to do the opposite. So we're going to grab um, an REQ, pull that one down, and bring this one up to about 200. Also using our comp. So all of the chorusing and stuff is really evident on the higher one. But I can increase the low end. I can increase the low end like this. Remember, what studio snack do you like? Eric will choose one of you at random and you will win a free one-year membership of the Produce Like a Pro Academy if you're not already a member. If you are a member, you get an extension of a year. If you're a lifetime member, you can choose any, any Pro Mix Academy courses. There's some there that are very expensive and very large and last for hours and hours. So um, please let us know and also hit the like button. Please hit the like button. I see we have 300 people watching. Let's get 300 likes up. That would be amazing. Hit that like button. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, Do Kid. <laughs> Cool. So now the bass is sounding good, but it's also sounding loud. So let's bring it down. Um, I'm just going to call that bass. Do, 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 do. So we have the bass channel. Let's put that into another overall one. We'll call it five. Okay. So now we've got an auxiliary. Do, do, do. Dum dee dum dum dum, and that's now bass. Just an overall control. I'm not going to get too heavy with compression on this because I still want the dynamics of the performance. I just want it to be even ish. <laughs> there you go, it's tucked in a little bit more even. <laughs> Studio snack. Snack of choice I have right now is sour Skittles, and oh, that sounds good. Please hit that like button, everybody. And uh, once again, thank you, DistroKid, for sponsoring this. We like DistroKid because as producers, engineers, and mixers, we can get paid from source. It's really good. Maltesers. Ah. In yeah. Email eric at produce like a pro, Ty. Uh, Ty B. Maltesers. I love Maltesers. Shh. Can we send Lily out for um, for some Roros? That's why I like to eat. Roros is uh, Lebanese fo food. It's it's a Lebanese restaurant run by Lebanese people. The food is absolutely delicious. It is on Sunset in Cherokee, next to just kitty corner to um, Sunset Sound. I love that place. Wonderful people, great family, wonderful food. <laughs> So I just gained up the overheads a bit because they were giving us a good view of the drums. Even though they're obviously been compressed going in quite heavily, I do like what they're doing. Do 
I see some Greek there. We do love Greek. Lily's not singing on this. Um, there's three singers on this. If Michael is still here, he might let us know. Oh yeah, Lily's a really good piano player. Really good. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll do uh, we'll do brass next week. We're going to open this up next Monday and carry on. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget to download the multi tracks. Please hit the like on the way out. Once this is finished, did I? Um, yeah, I recorded met James Blunt. I did a, um, a single called um, uh, "I'll Be Your Man," which was actually quite a big hit in Europe. So um, thank you, James, for letting me be involved in that. Yeah, I, I produced and engineered a song for him called I'll Be Your Man. Junk, 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 junk. It had that uh, faith kind of um, George Michael groove, Bo Diddley. That's where it goes back to. Junk, 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 junk. Who won, Eric? Ty B, was that correct? Ty B. Ty B won. Thank you, everyone. Go check out the link for DistroKid down below. Thank you, Dist DistroKid, for sponsoring. You can get 30% off memberships. Um, for us, for producers, engineers, and mixers, it's a godsend to have your artist go up on Use It, because when you use it, you can assign your percentage that you're owed on the track or tracks, and I think it's rather wonderful. So check out DistroKid and check out the fact that you can get 30% off, and please hit the like button. So long, farewell, everyone. Thank you. See you next Monday. If you're an Academy member, or if you're not an Academy member, please join. We will mix critique the song in there. And I'd love to hear what you do. Next, on Friday, we'll be live streaming in the Academy. Um, oh, actually, we're at... What will we be doing it from the village? We're get the village maybe, we'll... maybe we'll do it from the village. Yeah, I'll see if I can get this later. Yeah, Friday. Maybe we'll live stream from the village. Woohoo for those of you. Live stream from the village. And if you're not an Academy member, we'll see you next Monday. But maybe become an Academy member and you can do and join us on Friday. So long, farewell, la vida, say, and au revoir. Adios, goodbye.